I do have a little warping because of my block. So I'm going to lay this face down on this piece of leather. I'm going to take my leather mallet and I'm just going to gently tap to flatten it back out. The leather will protect the little wire. And there it's flat. So what we're going to do now is we are going to take some more of the same wire that we fused the rim and we're going to put some decorations on here. Now, I'm gonna keep this simple, but you can get as intricate as you want. And when we go on to the advanced class this month, I'm gonna show you some different steps. So we're gonna do this in the advanced class, and then we're gonna take it a step further. So I'm gonna take my wire, and I'm just going to measure a diagonal pattern. Now, I'm not going to give you a plan or a pattern for this because I want you to come up with a plan. But I do want it to be geometric because that will be simpler for you. Cut just on the outside of your line. Okay. There's a small little bend there, so I'm going to take my pliers and straighten that out. I'm just going to press it in the jaws of the pliers. Make sure that both sides. Now I'm placing this wire in the opposite direction of the texture. Take my wire and straighten it. Got a little bend in it, so I'm going to straighten it out. We don't want any curves or bends. the straighter the wires are, the prettier they will be on the project. See, now it's still got a little curve.
we're going to do is we're going to make some granulation to put in our stripe. This wire is um, 14 gauge. Now, the easiest and the best way I have found, and other people may do it differently, is to take a washer, rest the wire all the way down onto the bottom surface, make sure it's straight up and down, and then rest your cutters on the washer and cut. Now, the bigger the washer and the heavier gauge of wire, a bigger granulation. In the advanced class, I'm going to show you an easy and foolproof way to do gradiated um, uh, granulation that we're going to put on the inside rim of our project. But for this project, we want some nice, good, solid balls. So we're going to do a few of those. Don't do it too fast. You want to make sure that they're the same size. And if you get in a hurry, sometimes you'll not have your cutters in the right spot. Now I've got five. I think I'm going to do two more. This is a very good basic pattern that you can, or design that you can build on, and you can put all types of granulation. You could actually purposely bend your wires and make wavy patterns and things, but um, we're, this pattern today I think is a good basic one for you. Now we're going to take these little granules and we're going to go over there and we're going to ball them up, make our grains, and then we're going to take this over there. We're going to fuse the entire thing with our granules in place. Now you do not have to flux your granules. I just want a little container to hold them in and so I just drop them into my flux container. So you're going to want to set them out a little ways apart. If they're too close together, they're going to find each other and they're going to mold together into one. You also don't want them where they'll roll into each other. This is a fun process. My grandchildren love to make granules or balls. You can do this, of course, with your butane torch. And I am going to move this one a bit away. Now just focus on one at a time. The others will be getting warm because they're in close proximity. And you'll just see it ball up. And I like to see it kind of, the, the metal go so liquid that it just kind of dances on the surface. And there I have my granulation.
I would need to brush it on there if I didn't use such a little bitty bit, but I'm getting low, so I'm kind of being conservative. But with Argentium, you, you flux the whole piece, the whole kit and caboodle. baby out there. Now I'm also going to put some more wires on there. So let's see here. Let's see. I'm just going to measure and cut some. Let's see. Make sure this is up a little more. And yep. That charcoal block, she be hot. Okay. Monkey tweezers. They got one end broke off. I flatten these out just a dab. Make sure my little lines are very straight. Okay, that's too long, so I'm going to nip that a little bit. So I'm just going to dump these little babies in there, make sure they're all in there. And I'm just going to pick them up and put them between those wires. Let's do four. What do you guys think? So when I twist up my paper towel to wick away the excess, that I can move my pieces exactly where I want them at that time. And I'm probably not close enough for you to really see. There's a type of a magnetic or a static, I don't know the um, exact physics of it, that causes those pieces to cling. They, they really want to cling. So, and I'm getting as much flux out of there If you notice, they want to—they're like little magnets almost, which is great if you want them side by side. All right, guys, play nice. Now 
Making jewelry is fiddly business. Okay, I'm going to put my bigger torch tip on here, make quick work of this. That was the number one, I'm putting my number two on there. But again, if you have a butane torch with a project this small, um, you can definitely use that. So I'm going to keep my tweezers handy because if something pops or moves, then I've got them handy. So you're just going to circle the entire thing with your flame. And I've got my flame. I don't know how it looks in the camera, but I'm keeping it about two inches above and I am pointing it straight down and I'm heating the entire thing. So first the flux goes puffy and white, and then it goes nasty, 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 which is the stage we're at right now. Then what it's going to do is all that nastiness is going to burn off, and it's going to be clear. So the goal of fusing Argentium is its fusing temperature is about 1600 degrees. So we want to bring it to 1600 degrees, which is its melting point, and then hold it there long enough for the pieces to all fuse together without melting the whole thing in a mess. But this is big enough, I don't think we're going to do that. It takes a lot of heat to, do some, to melt something this big. So, after the after it, the flux goes clear and everything starts to look nice and clean and it's not quite there yet. Um, the very next stage is that the flux will get hot and it'll start to separate and it'll look like tiny little micro droplets dancing on the surface. Well, first they're not dancing, they're just kind of sitting there. And actually right there I'm, on that edge, I'm seeing them come to life. Then once they start to dance around, the, after a little bit, the metal will almost look molten. It will look super, super shiny. And since all the rest of that's fused, now I'm just going to concentrate here. It's all hot too. So now I'm just going to concentrate right here. And that one little wire isn't exactly where I want it, but I'm going to leave it. So all the dirty's pretty well burned away. And now it's all clear. And the flux is breaking down and it's got little micro droplets. So I want to see a flash of liquid argentium. And we're getting there. The, the metal is almost molten. Now what, also what I'm looking for is I'm looking underneath the wires and the uh, granulation to make sure 
that there is a white line. That is where the argentium uh, has oxidized and the germanium oxide has uh, developed on the seam. And I believe we are good and fused. Now that is super, super, super duper hot right now. Um, one thing that I teach my students, and I made this little saying up, is if it skitters, now this is important with Argentium, I cannot pick that hot piece up right now or it'll crack, but if you drop a water droplet on it and it skitters like that, it's too hot to quench. So we're gonna let it cool until it sizzles, until when we drop a droplet on there, it sizzles. But don't keep dropping water on there because that, that can be just as bad as uh, uh, if, it quench, if, if you quenched it. I'm just, so I'm gonna dry this puppy off. Kind of cool, now I textured the back of this before I ever did anything to it. I textured it real, real heavy. So I should have moved this wire down where it touched this a little bit, but it's alrighty. So I think it would be cool to have some more lines. Which way should we go? Should we do you know, if I put a wire there, then that might look like it did that on purpose. So that's what you do, is you take a, something you don't like and you make it into something you like. So I'm gonna move that. So let's put You need to hold that down when you cut it because I'm telling you, it'll go flying. Okay, so let's put a couple there. And then we could make a couple more to this way. Let's do some more that way. Let's straighten these out. They got a bow in them, so this one's got a definite bow in it. And the way I straighten those wires is, you'll see that little curve, is I just take my pliers and I put it in the whole entire jaw and just clamp that down and it straightens it right out. turn it around and now like I said earlier in a perfect world if I wasn't going live I would have done all of these at the same time so I really don't like to fuse it that many times So here are, so granules are here. I'm gonna go ahead and, well, I'm gonna have to flux the whole mess. So let's go ahead and cut some more wires. So I'm getting really good feedback on my membership courses. They said that they're really liking the tips. They like the projects, but they are real pleased that all the little tips I'm giving them while I'm teaching so that's that's really cool um, for $17 a month for the beginner level I, I feel like I give a ton of content well I'm gonna have to stick some balls in there to keep those wires from scooching up together And we'll take them out when we flex the rest of it. So. Okay. 
Okay. Straightening this out. So this would look so cool, and I may do that. Put a stone right there, like a tube set CZ or some such. Wouldn't that look cool? Big kink in that wire. Okay. All right, so let's flux. I'll take these balls out. Now, if I were to dump all of this into this flux, I wouldn't know which piece went where. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay them out like this. And then I'll flux them individually. and then put them on. So I'm just painting it in flux. first wire it's actually easier to lay these wires out with the flux because the flux like I said earlier kind of acts as a kind of either I don't know if it's a static effect or if it's a magnetic effect or we'll just leave him there for a minute and see if that
Why, George, I think we've got it. I had a cup of cold coffee here. I think I'll have a swig. Whoa, the dance of the granules. Yep, I should have I should have whipped away some more of that flux. There we go. See how it's white and puffy? It's pushing those out of the way. Now the cool thing, another thing, see if we had we'd soldered all those other wires and granules, um, now that we decided to add more, we, run the, we would have run the risk of that solder coming unsoldered. So with Argentium and fusing, we can just add more stuff. Not have to worry about it. There's the dirty flux. or the dirty look. You need a bushy flame. You can do this with your butane or crembolay torch as long as it's got a bushy flame. But you can't do it with a torch like a little silversmith torch because it has two targeted and pointed flame. Uh, and it just it just won't work. Okay, now that dirty flux is starting to burn off. And there's the flux separating into the little water droplets. Well, flux droplets, I guess. Now it's going clear. Clear, clear, clear. And the metal's starting to look molten. So we'll make sure those granules get nice and fused. So I'm looking underneath them as well. You will see them flash and go wet and liquid. Okay, it's 1600 degrees. And we are here. So now we're going to trim the excess off from around the wire. And I have found that I really like using the Joyce Chins for this. We could use a jewelry saw, um, but if you're new at using a jewelry saw, uh, let me encourage you to use the joist chins for this. You just need to go slow and be careful that you are not nicking into your wire.
we're going to file this once we're done around the edge so if you've got a little more that is better than having too, li too little um, you can't put it back on but we can file it off So now we're going to get our file, we're going to rest it in the notch and we're going to file around the edges. and the small bits. Now, this design would be pretty up or down. I think I'm going to put the bale up here. Now, because it's going to hang off a little bit, I'm going to take this little uh, titanium strip just to have something to rest it on. Those little titanium strips are wonderful for something just like this. Now you're going to want to make sure that you have it positioned exactly where you want it. Now because we're going to solder this, we need that flush. And I noticed that this little end is sitting up a little. So I'm just going to... Bend it with my hands, make sure I reflux it because the oils from my fingers will prevent or wipe off all the flux. Now, because I had an extra ball or granule from earlier, I made another one because I thought it would be very attractive to put them here at the bale on the back.
This is certainly an option. You do not have to do this. But be sure you wick away tons of that flux because when you've got your little granules sitting there, um, they can pop around. So I'm just going to put a bit of solder there and solder that on. I'm going to cut just a couple of tiny little snippets of solder, hard argentium solder. Hold your finger over the end so they don't go flying. And I'm going to rest that solder right there where the ball meets the end of the wire on both sides. I'm going to take my paper towel and I'm going to wick away the excess. You can do this with your butane torch. Now I'm going to hold my tweezers in my hand because just in case one of those little balls pops around because of the solder, or if the solder should pop away, then I can use my tweezers to push it back. But it looks like it stayed well, which means I whipped away the uh, flux very well. Now I'm going to heat the entire piece merely to get the flux to the clear state. It is the heat of the metal that causes the solder to flow, not the flame of the torch. So as soon as the, meat, the metal around the solder gets to the solder temperature, and with hard argentium solder, it's almost the same temperature as fusing. Now we're going to let it cool and we're going to pickle and clean.